So, welcome everyone again to today's class. We'll be looking at we are still on the series of management and cost accounting for professional accountants or uh, management of finance related courses. So, what today we're going to be looking at a special topic. As a matter of fact, it's one of the newly evolving topic in management accounting. And this is what we refer to as modern management accounting techniques. You know, management accounting, we have some techniques that we refer to as traditional accounting techniques. But this time out, this actually captures some newly evolving concepts or techniques in management accountancy. And what are those techniques we're going to be looking at today? We have number one, just-in-time techniques or just-in-time system, what we call DIT. Another technique is what we refer to as the backflush accounting or the backflush costing. You know, unlike the previous traditional form of cost accounting, all these are newly evoluted accounting ME techniques. Another form of ME techniques that we're going to be discussing in this series is what we refer to as life cycle accounting or what we call life cycle costing, LCC. And the last we'll be looking at in this audio is target costing. So, so number one, we'll be looking at just-in-time system or JIT techniques. JIT techniques was developed in Japan. You know, it actually evolved and was firstly used in Japan. I mean, in the Japanese system. And since then, due to the fact that it's relevant, it has been, it has, through the test of time, it has, through the test of time, showed it's relevant in management accountancy. It has then been widely accepted and widely acclaimed as a major contributor to the country's sources. So, as the name suggests, is a, is a management accounting technique that seeks to eliminate the need to keep inventories. So, to eliminate, it eliminates the need to keep inventories as a result of that, Allowing to save cost associated with stock holding. Now, if you still remember in financial management, there's what we call inventory management. Now, part of those things that actually makes up the total cost of inventory is actually what we refer to as the holding cost. The holding cost, which is always the holding cost per unit multiplied by the average inventory which is always x i mean total inventory all over two but that's actually in inventory management by the time we get to that in financial management we'll be able to look at that but one of those uh, one of these objective and goal of jit is to actually eliminate or reduce the need of incurring cost on stock holding. So, what DIT therefore introduced is that inventory will actually be requested for or be ordered for at their point of usage or at their point of need. So, in that instance, immediately inventory or stock are supplied, they are used immediately, thereby there is no need for holding it or incurring any cost on such stock holding. So, we say JIT, as the name suggests, it seeks to eliminate the need to keep inventories. So, there is no need to keep inventory, there is no need to spend on warehouse, there is no need for us to actually have a facility that we are maintaining, that we are running, all for the purpose of keeping our inventory. 
JIT just in time. The time that we need it, that is just when we order for it. So, as I said earlier on, the main objective or the goals of JIT are number one, it does not allow for any opening or closing stock. No opening or closing stock. You know, goods are requested for at their point of usage and as a matter of fact, the usage or the quotation that will be requested for is exactly what is needed. So, there will not be any leftover. So, thereby, there is no closing stock. And as a result, when there is no closing stock, you invariably know that there will not be any opening stock. So, one of the main goals of JIT is that what? No opening or closing stock. In other words, items are purchased or produced just in time. They are purchased at their point of using, at the, the, at the time they are needed, just in time, in the required quantities and quality. So, items are purchased, are produced at the period, the specific time they are needed. Number two, it eliminates non-value adding activities. You know, any activities that is not adding value, they are not ordered for, you know, inventories that at a particular period of time is not being used, as a matter of fact, for that period of time, it's been a waste, it's not adding any value, so JIT tends to eliminate such kind of issue or challenges. Number three there is no production wastage you know all goods are requested for are ordered for in their exact number that are needed therefore there is no surplus talkless of being that there's going to be a wastage and lastly one of the main goal or strategic goal of jit is 100 percent on time delivery Deliveries are made accurately at the time they are needed. So, these are the goals of just in time. Now, another form of accounting management accounting techniques or MA techniques that, is, that are recently evolving is what we refer to as the back flush accounting or back flush costing. Back flush accounting is defined as a form or a method of costing which is associated with JIT production system, which applies cost to the output of a process. Now, follow me or go along with me. According to the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, SIMA, there are costs that do not mirror with the flow of products through the production processes but are, but are attached to outputs produced, that is, finished goods or cost of sales, on the assumption that such a back, such backflushed costs are a realistic measure of the cost incurred. Now, all this story, what they are trying to say is that back flush accounting does not follow the, from the normal traditional precept that as the production process is being embarked upon stage by stage, accounting process or accounting entry are opened or journals are opened or ledgers respectively. No. But for back flush accounting is at the point where goods have, fin have been finished produced or at the point where sales are made, that's when costs are then traced back. That's when entries are made in a reversed way compared to the normal traditional way of following the production process in 
accounting for goods produced. Instead of traditional detailed tracking of material movement through stores and production, back flush costing starts from the finished goods and works it backwards to attribute cost between cost of goods sold and finished goods inventory or materials inventory with no separate accounting for WIP and stores. What all these are just trying to say is that accounting entry are opened, are recognized, are journalized at the point where production has been finalized or at the point where sales are made or at the point where cost of goods sold or cost are actually to be attributed to their cost of sales. So, it's a form of reversed or backward accounting system. So, that's why it is called back flush accounting. So, as for back flush accounting, by the time we are taking analytics and workings, I mean, enlightened workings and in-depth workings on modern management accounting techniques, we able to get the concept that surrounds this. So I want to believe you've been able to get something, learn something in this module and in this series.